Hi, I'm Natalie from Namaste Farms and today, um, earlier I did a video talking about the industry and then I got to thinking, um, since I'm already making videos, I may as well make one about catching sheep. It's an art. I don't have herding dogs per se. I do have Australian Shepherds and they're kind of the jokesters of the herding world. They aren't super helpful. I have an older one, actually, the way that he will help me is I'm not exactly sure how he figures it out, but over like eight years of doing it with me, he figures out which animal I want and he actually will hold on to their shoulder. He'll go and it's almost like he's, he's heading them essentially. He'll hold on to the shoulder. He's never broken the skin. He'll usually grab the blanket. And essentially, if they're going to go any further, they have to drag him and he weighs about 90 pounds. So, um, and then it gives me a chance to be able to use my shepherd's crook and hook them with it. That said, my dog is old and it does stress the sheep. The biggest thing with working with ruminants is not stressing them out. They lose condition. I live in the desert. It's about 110 degrees here a lot. And so you don't want to stress them out with a dog and you don't want them to run. You don't want to keep running them and running them and running them. And the way that animals, ruminants um, think as far as predator prey is it's called the circle of safety or um, some people call it the flight zone. And what you would do is you essentially, you put them in the middle of a 360 degree circle and there's certain areas where you position your body in relation to them that makes them either go forward or double back or stand still. And if any of you have any friends that are cutters, cut, cutting horse people, um, cutters and the horses completely understand the flight zone and that's how they're able to work the cattle back and forth and pull them out of the herd. And when I work with my sheep and my goats, I basically become one of them. I become one of the animals to figure out how I'm going to position my body to either to make them move forward, make them move backwards, or stand still. I have extremely flighty breeds of sheep. I don't have docile sheep. Wensleydales are notoriously um, nasty, and some people, someone's going to disagree with me on this, and I can just say, keep your opinion to yourself then because I raise them I know mine aren't friendly they're not bottle fed and they'll run through you rather rather than run away literally they'll jump into you they're very very large and um, just super primal uh, the ones that that I um, I'm going to catch in a little bit are half Wensleydale half Wensleydale and Gotland and Gotland does take that temperament and like calm it down a little bit that said they're still ruminants so when I talk about their flight zone, what happens is um, every animal has a different flight zone, meaning how close can I get to it to, before I've, th I've, I'm going to make them take off in this 360 degree circle, right? Sometimes the circle around them is very small and sometimes it's very big. If it's very big, it means I can't get hardly at all close to them before they bolt and take off. Um, the pasture that I'm in now is pretty big and I could, I could probably give them heat stroke. If I was to just run them all you know, and, and run them and run them and run them. And if I'm behind them, they're always going to go forward. If you're behind a prey animal, it's going to run. So you don't chase to catch. Humans are predators. We want to chase to catch. For some reason, we think just run after them. My 20 year old son, very strong, very much like a predator. It's so hard to learn to not chase them if you want to catch them. It is a dance. I am not a patient person, so it's extremely difficult for me. But the dance is something like this. Somebody goes to their shoulder, and then someone closes the door in front of their face because they naturally will want to go forward. So a person comes in front of their face, but if they see that they're going to start to double back, you know you put too much pressure on. You have to back up. Because our objective is we want to get them to stand still so we can get close enough to catch them. As long as they're moving, we can't catch them. I'm not as fast as a sheep. And they're so much bigger than me. If I was to grab hold of them, they're just gonna drag me. So we're going to do this dance where one person blocks the front door where their head is, and another person goes sort of between their shoulder and their hindquarters. If I go, if I walk towards their hindquarters, it's always gonna shoot them forward. They're always gonna want walk forward. But having a person at the head is the front door, and if that door's closed, they should stop as long as I don't put too much pressure, right? The front door's closed, I walk not really to their hindquarters, because if I do, they're gonna shoot forward, and if they see that door closed, they're just gonna go, at, and, they're, and they're gonna go in the space that's between me and the other handler helping me, right? So I wanna sort of walk to the shoulder, because whenever you walk to the shoulder, they stop. 
walk to their hindquarters, they shoot forward, you walk to their head, they go the other way. So the objective of the person that's at the front door, which is their head, is to dance with them, to stand and only move forward when they think that the animal is going to challenge them. You always want to work on the fence line also. <laughs> always work on a fence line and usually you don't want to have a bunch of, um, you don't want to have a lot of difference in like vegetation. I actually have that. Um, it's not ideal, but I have horse pastures. Um, you, it, solid walls are also better, but, but for me, I've kind of had to, this is my environment and I've sort of learned to work with it. So what we do is we try to keep them on the fence. The objective is keep them on the fence and keep them from running forward or backwards and try and get as close to them as possible before using my shepherd's crook, which is an art in itself, and hook them on the neck. So um, in a little bit, you're gonna see us do that. Stop. 